Yeah, you're absolutely right. The core of the problem is the 1872 mining law. Um, it was put in place back when Ulysses S. Grant was president, and you and I would have been wearing hoop skirts <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Uh, so it was done when mining was done with a pick and shovel, and the, the impetus behind it was westward expansion. So the mining law was really geared towards, let's get all these miners out west, let's expand into the west and promote westward expansion. Um, and it has not been substantively changed since that time. There have been tweaks here and there, but not any comprehensive reform of the 1872 mining law. And what it allows, it allows a mining company or an individual to go in and stake a mining claim or an unlimited number of mining claims on our federal public lands. They can hold those claims indefinitely um, for a very small annual fee and um, there is no return to the federal, the U.S. taxpayer for the minerals that are extracted off our federal public lands. So uh, unlike all of the other resource extraction industries, oil and gas and coal, they all pay royalties for the minerals that are extracted. And those funds go into the U.S. government to pay for other things including a portion of it is allocated towards cleanup of these types of industrial activities. That's not the case with hard rock mining. They do not pay a royalty for the minerals that are extracted off of our federal public lands. Um, and that's an enormous amount of money that's been lost over the year um, in terms of gold production and copper production and um, all the other metals you can think of, um, that's an enormous amount of money that has been lost to the U.S. taxpayer um, and gone into the coffers of these mining industries, mining companies, uh, many of which are multinational companies. Um, so they may be headquartered somewhere else, have a local company that operates the mine, but the profits are going outside of the U.S., to a different and, country, to a different uh, country. They're yeah. taking our resources, not paying royalties, polluting, and the money's going to some company in another country? Yeah, there are quite a few companies that are headquartered elsewhere um, that are the parent company, and the subsidiary company operates in the U.S., manages the site, um, but, of course, the profits from that go to um, the parent company. Um, and if that's located outside of the U.S., then that's where those profits are, are landing. So it's a really unfortunate law. Um, the other aspect of it is that it doesn't deal specifically with the environmental impacts of hard rock mining. And it prioritizes mining over all other land uses. So where all of these federal lands are open to claim staking, except with a few exceptions, like wilderness areas and national parks, but by and large, everything is open to claim staking. And, um, and when a mine is proposed, and after it goes through an environmental review process, the Federal Land Management Agency, whether it's the Forest Service or the BLM, they feel like their hands are tied. They can't say no to the mine, even if it would conflict with some other important land use. So um, assuming that it meets all of the requirements, um, but it's in an important drinking aquifer, they can't say no, this, is, this area should be protected because it is the drinking water supply for a large city and it would be incompatible to have a mine here. Uh, the Federal Land Management Agency can't simply say, no, we think this land should be better used for this particular purpose. So unlike with the other types of resource extraction where there's a public interest component, that's not the case with hard rock mining. Um, and that has presented 
and continues to present huge problems because as we know, the West is developed. We no longer need to expand into the West. And these lands are important for a lot of other uses. And as we all know, fresh water, clean fresh water is an important asset and it's in limited supply. And um, there should be a balance. There should be a balance between where mining is authorized and the ability to say no when it conflicts with other important land uses such as um, providing a drinking water supply for large populations. Well, I think um, I, I totally agree with you 100%, Bonnie. And this is, this is, I am so outraged. I just cannot even, thinking about the billions of dollars that have been lost because of this law and no one willing to step up. I know there were some senators trying to introduce some le legislation over in Colorado and that that were, I think, in Utah um, about this. I'm not sure where they're at with that. I do want to follow up <clears throat> and see if anything has been done. Or I'm just wondering who the heck benefits from this when we're, we're letting China and Australia and these other companies come onto our federal land and take our resources that belong to every single American and what are they paying for this what where is the money going except in their pocket is what I want to know how are they what do they pay something do they pay something for the land um, you know what are we getting for the for our resources that these other countries these other corporations owned that are based out of other countries are taking from the American people well, you know, certainly they pay a small amount for each claim that they hold on public lands. There's an annual fee. I've forgotten what, how much it is specifically. I want to say somewhere in the realm of $175 a year per claim. Um, so the what? The oh my fees God. are very minimal. And, and this uh, is run by the, the Forest Service. I got to tell you, Bonnie, I, I want to just fire the Forest Service. I don't even know what their purpose is. I have found things on, um, on the website, I mean, huge documents full of all these pesticides that the Forest Service has approved for use in, our, our, that, in lands that should be kept pristine and not one single drop of pesticide should be used there. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of what happened um, in our San Bernardino Mountains right here where we're located. Uh, Nestle, uh, the French company, have taken just last year alone, they took 36 million gallons of spring water. Spring water, which is the rarest water on the planet, less than 1% of our water is spring water. And they paid a whole $524 for 36 million gallons of spring That's water wild. during a drought from our San Bernardino Mountains where there is no water and are causing things to die as a result of it. And the Forest Service, I had a gentleman on my show who's been very involved in this, they have no guts. They, they are afraid of standing up to Nestle. So what are we going to do, Bonnie? We cannot put these kind of situations in the hands of people like that are working for our Forest Service, they are not trained to deal with a multinational co company that is coming in and strong arming and bullying their way to taking our resources. Nestle took 36 million gallons of spring water and paid $524. There is something terribly wrong here they are taking uh, these other companies are taking our resources and like Bonnie just told us they're paying a yearly fee of hundred and seventy five dollars when they are making millions and millions of dollars this is just unbelievable now mining let's um, I want you to explain to people about mining because like I said um, I feel like I really had this di disconnect um, for mining and then when I started looking at the pictures Bonnie and then I started hearing some of the stories that were happening right there in Montana with you know mining operations that have been abandoned and what is actually left
from these operations. Can you can you try and give our listeners a visual on what what when these mining companies walk away, what do they leave? Um, yeah, but before I um, go into that, I just really wanted to quickly say that today, yes, um, I was such a um, nexus for this call because um, the the Western senators that you mentioned, um, led by Senator Tom Udall um, out of New Mexico, Bennett oh, that's from right. Colorado, Heinrich from New Mexico, Markey from Massachusetts, and Wyden from Oregon, introduced uh, mining law reform legislation today. Oh, so, really? Uh, wow, Oregon I just got goosebumps. Mining. I just got goosebumps, Wadi. I can't believe we're doing this show today. Yeah. Well, it's a reintroduction of a bill that they've tried to get um, passed in the past, and um, we would certainly encourage listeners to uh, let their congressional members know that they would like to see this legislation passed, um, because uh, that is what will change what happens on the ground in terms of our mining on federal public land. So. It is the Hard Rock Mining and Reclamation Act of 2017, and we'd certainly encourage people to let their um, California um, congressional members know that they want them to support this legislation because um, we need to have modern uh, mining laws to reflect um, the impacts and the social values um, that are present today rather than um, in 1872. Yeah, no so, free rides, yeah. no le leaving us with a cleanup, you know? I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah, so great emphasis. I want the money, man. I want the money for our country, especially from these people. They need a, no more free rides, no more taking our resources without paying yeah. royalties. Like, like you said, every other uh, natural... Um, resource like oil and gas they all are all paying royalties like give us an idea on how much they pay like well, do you have any idea like how much like how, how yeah. much how much revenue like it does the oil and gas industry bring in royalties in this country well, I, don't, I don't know the total amounts the um they pay a range from eight to twelve and a half percent um but i don't know what wow. that generates per year but one of the things that we'd like to see the hard rock industry do is do similar to coal because the coal royalty, there's federal um, statute SMACRA that um, uses a portion of the royalties from coal to clean up coal country. And we would like to see something similar for hard rock mining, um, similar to what's in this legislation where a portion of the royalty then um, you know, some will go into the general treasury to pay for other things, but a portion of it would be allocated towards cleaning up um, the long list of abandoned mines that plague the West. So um, there would then be this dedicated source of revenue from the industry going to clean up the industries. I love it. I back. love it. So, this is what we need to do. Now, um, I do want to get into the you know, kind of the law and how all that happens. But since we're talking about, you know, cleanup in that, uh, yeah. there's, there's like some serious things happening. There's some pressure right now being put on Montana. There are people up there mining. This is not even an American company, everyone. I, I think it's Chinese, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that is up there mining in Montana. They got the rights to come and mine on our land and they are creating all this waste, this toxic waste, in the process of their mining. And go ahead and tell our listeners, Bonnie, what this corporation, this foreign corporation, wants to do with the toxic waste they're generating in a mine, their mine up in Montana. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure which mine specifically you're referring to. Well, the Again, ones that wanted to dump in the, tr in the, in the pristine river where the trout, uh, people come trout fishing. It's like one of the most pristine rivers in the s state of Montana, or the, actually okay. our whole country. Yeah, and we certainly actually have a number of proposals right now, which is why I asked, because 
Um, oh, we I have know. you have it. You're thrown of, with a bunch of them, not not yeah, just one. We have lots of different projects that are being proposed right now. There are a couple that are right outside of Yellowstone National Park. There is one that's proposed on the Smith River that's in Tina Mai, and that may be the one you're referring to. That one is. Um, a really renowned trout stream in Montana, a spectacular place. Um, there are also a couple of proposals to mine under a wilderness area in northwest Montana, um, the Cabinet Mountains Wilderness, one of the first 10 wilderness areas ever established by Congress. Um, so we have a lot of projects. Um, one of the most significant impacts that we see from mining and that could occur from a couple of these projects is acid mine drainage. Um, acid mine drainage is often associated with gold mines and copper mines because they are often found in association with sulfides. And when sulfides are dug up as part of the mining process and exposed to air and to water, they react to form sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid then dissolves other nasty metals from the surrounding rock in a process we call acid mine drainage. And that is acidic, like the name says, like uh, battery acid. So it's very toxic to aquatic life, fish and all little aquatic insects that they feed on. Um, it also mobilizes other metals that are a public health risk. So things like um, lead. lead and mercury and copper and zinc and arsenic. It really depends on the deposit. But right. um, there are a lot of nasty things that can be liberated as part of acid mine drainage and then carried downstream. Cadium was another thing that was found in the Gold King yeah. mine. Yeah. Uh, and we, um, the biggest problem with acid mine drainage is that it is so long lasting. It is a problem that continues for hundreds to thousands of years once wow. it develops. And um, there is no way to stop acid mine drainage once it occurs on a large scale. At that point, um, it is really capturing that water and treating it to try and prevent further downstream impacts. And what the scientists and the government agencies all use a term in perpetuity. So we're looking at um, water pollution that continues in perpetuity because we really don't know at what point in the future it will um, subside. It just depends on how long the sulfides are still present in that ore. Um, but it can continue for hundreds to thousands of years, and it's very uh, costly to capture and treat. Um, and it has really significant public health implications if it isn't captured and treated because we don't want to see those pollutants in the um, water resources that people rely on for drinking water. Um, so that is a very serious issue that we face in Montana in terms of existing mines um, and also in terms of proposed mines because um, it is such a long-lasting and severe problem.